how the ransomware attack was stopped, at least for now. A 22-year-old computer geek from the UK is being hailed a hero for stopping the global spread of a ransomware attack that began last Friday. The ransomware, known as WannaCry, exploits a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows that was revealed in stolen NSA documents. The malicious software locks computers and demands users pay 300 US dollars in Bitcoin to retrieve their files. A British researcher stopped the attack after discovering the malware was connecting to an unregistered domain. The researcher paid around 10 US dollars to register the domain name, which activated a kill switch in the ransomware. However, the researcher warned that the hackers would change the code and reboot the ransomware. Cybersecurity experts feared there would be a fresh bout of infections on Monday as people returned to work after the weekend. Last week, the ransomware locked more than 200,000 computers in over 150 countries. It caused chaos at organizations including Britain's National Health Service, FedEx, and Telefonica in Spain. Experts advised users to download a patch for Windows and reboot their computers to prevent the ransomware from spreading. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Don't click on any suspicious looking links, okay? Cyber attack holds Austrian hotel to ransom. A popular European hotel was held to ransom in a cyber attack over the weekend. Hackers disabled the lock system at the four-star Romantique Se Hotel Jägervert in Austria over the weekend. The hack locked guests out of their rooms. There are reportedly some 180 guests booked into the luxury hotel at the time. The hotel's reservation system and cash desk were also taken offline, with hackers demanding a 1,500 euro Bitcoin payment to unlock everything. The hotel said they had no choice but to pay the ransom because neither police nor the insurance company could help them. After the ransom was paid, the hotel's systems returned to normal. According to The Local, this is the third time the hotel has been hacked. The hacker reportedly tried once more, but failed after the hotel put stronger security measures in place. Could your car become the target of hackers? As if we don't have enough to worry about with cyber thieves hacking into social media, our emails and other online accounts, a report published by the Government Accountability Office says there's a new target we've been overlooking, our cars. Though they make driving safer, the various computerized gadgets inside modern cars also provide ample ways for hackers to target vehicles. In fact, the more lines of code within a vehicle's software, the more vulnerable it is to cyber attacks. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, a modern vehicle can contain as many as 100 million lines of software code, 15 times more than a Boeing 787 Dreamliner. A hacker could gain remote access by breaking into a car's Bluetooth, radio, and Wi-Fi systems. By doing so, the attacker could affect systems critical to driver and passenger safety, including the car's brakes and engine. Once these systems are compromised, it may affect the car's ability to maintain cruise control and the car's collision prevention feature, so that sensors on the vehicle are no longer able to engage the brakes when they foresee a collision. Sensors that help keep the car within its own lane may also be impaired due to a cyber attack. Attacks could be prevented by securing communication between a vehicle's devices, and firewalls could restrict communication between networks in case one system is compromised. However, while these technological solutions can be built into new cars, they can't be installed in older cars, meaning that many vehicles will continue to stay vulnerable in the short term. Attack of the Zombie Refrigerators <laughs> Hackers used everything but the kitchen sink last week to take down the websites of Twitter, Netflix, The New York Times, and more. Internet services across much of the U.S. were disrupted or temporarily taken offline in a massive distributed denial of service attack last Friday. Known as a DDoS for short, the attack targeted thousands of devices with weak security and easy-to-guess passwords to form a botnet. Vulnerable devices can include anything with web connectivity, such as smart refrigerators, routers, security cameras, digital video recorders, and more. This botnet then overwhelmed internet servers and disrupted popular services such as Netflix, Spotify, Reddit, Twitter, and more. 
So what can one do to defend against an attack with the potential to overwhelm the web using thousands upon thousands of interconnected zombie devices? Well, be Amish. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Hackers penetrate Polish Airlines computer system. Hackers attacked a Polish Airlines computer system over the weekend, grounding more than a dozen domestic and international flights. Hackers accessed Polish Airline Lot's computer system on Sunday afternoon, gaining access to the company's flight plans. According to the BBC, domestic as well as international flights from Warsaw to cities in Germany and Denmark were affected. At least 1,400 passengers were left stranded in Warsaw's Frederick Chopin Airport. The hacked computer system took about five hours to fix. Ten national and international flights were cancelled during that time and at least a dozen more were delayed. Israeli linked malware suspected of hacking Iran nuclear talks. Kaspersky Lab say they have uncovered a sophisticated malware infection in venues where high level discussions surrounding Iran's nuclear program took place. An advanced spy malware with links to Israel is thought to have been used in a cyber attack on hotels hosting the P5 plus 1 talks in Europe. Kaspersky Lab says the malware exploits zero-day vulnerabilities. These attacks happen the same day a software weakness is discovered and before its creators can make a fix. Once inside, the malware modifies system rules, allowing it to spread within a network through files commonly used to install software on remote computers. Dubbed Dooku 2.0, the malware doesn't change any preferences or system settings, making it difficult to trace. According to the Wall Street Journal, the malware contained modules designed to control infected computers and compress video feeds, possibly from surveillance cameras. As well as this, it targets communication networks, including Wi-Fi and phones, allowing hackers to listen in on connected users and steal sensitive information.